All right. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us this evening. Welcome to Retake, the League of Legends edition brought to you by EGF Media. My name is Jared Warnke, and joining me are Alex Shinkari, Erdenberger, and Owen Airship Bishop Kruger. How are you guys doing tonight? I am doing really well, Jared. Thanks for asking. Oh. I'm doing just fine. All right. So tonight we'll be taking a look at the LCS, what it means for fantasy leagues, and some of the predictions about next week. But first, let's get into some of the news. Not a whole lot happened this week. But the new patch, 6.3, that released last week, is most likely going to be hitting the LCS circuit. So let's talk a little bit about what that means to the LCS in this upcoming week. Alex, what do you got? Well, I think one of the biggest changes from this previous patch is uh, the buff to Xin Shao. Now, for those that don't know, uh, Xin Shao received a buff to his W Battle Cry, which previously gave him a heal on his every third auto attack, as well as actively giving him bonus attack speed. The active was not changed, but was but what was changed was the passive. Is now every third auto attack he critically strikes, as well as the heal now scales off his bonus AD. Now this is really big for the LCS because build, you can build him basically however you want now. You can also you can build against his Rage Blade and the Spirit Visage and stay in team fights forever. You don't die ever. And that's going to be pretty huge. I think Xin Chao is going to be a contested pick for um, competitive teams in the coming weeks. Yep. Owen, what do you got? We got that new item, Duskblade of Drakthar. Uh, it's not been really used too much yet, as people are kind of trying to feel where the item fits. It might end up being completely unused. And on the other hand, it might end up making those AD assassins like Rengar or Zed, maybe even Talon or who knows, Ashako kind of come out of the woodwork and really give them a ton of power in the 1v1. It's kind of unpredictable since it's like a DFG, well, rip DFG, but it's similar to how DFG used to work, with the exception of it being a passive. So the player can't really use it when they want to. It's probably going to be better on junglers, like a jungle pantheon or a jungle Rengar, because in lane you're going to auto attack to harass and then just proc it at the wrong time. But if it does work out correctly, it can kind of really flip the balance of power as far as AD assassins are concerned. Yeah, and some of the other big changes to this patch include Poppy, the top lane destruction that she has been bringing into the LCS is actually going to be going down a little bit in damage. Her Q Hammer Shock, that's going to be getting a little bit of a nerf, but the damage ratio, the AD ratio is actually up a little bit more from 0.7 to 0.8, not a whole lot for the early game, but maybe late game for those who like going full AD Poppy, and the damage on minions, it no longer deals reduced damage, it's full damage, clearing is going to be a little bit easier, her heroic charge is up in cooldown, and the R, her ultimate keeper's verdict, that knockup duration is cut by half a second from 1.5 to 1 full second, so whenever you just kind of hit it up just to try and get a little bit more CC onto the team, that's just going to be cut down a little bit. So we may or may not see Poppy a little bit more, I kind of expect nothing to really change. She might move down to support more often, but I don't really see too much happening. And we will move on into the LCS breakdown. So we had a lot of great games this week. So we'll start with Alex to start with North America about his pick. So my favorite game from this week was um, CLG versus TSM. And I feel like TSM has been working through the past weeks to kind of like clean up uh, a lot of the rusty edges that they've now gotten with this new team composition that they've put together. Um, I think it was a lot cleaner than their game against TIP, and I think this is proving that they are that they are a strong team, and they have now cleared off the rust for the most part. There's still some there. There's still a lot of gameplay errors that they were doing throughout the game, like little nitpicky stuff. But for the most part, they've gotten a lot better o over this week. So, yeah, TSM is definitely one of those teams that has a lot of potential, but hasn't really been living up to it. They're currently sitting in second place, but we'll get into that a little bit later. Do you think that they're going to be able to win a lot more, do you think, as they play Immortals in the upcoming weeks? Do you think that they're going to stand uh, a better chance? I, I think they might. Um, Immortals is still proving to be a fairly solid team because, you know, there's no one clear person that you want to pick take bans away from, and... Adrian plays a very, very good support game and just sit in the back and make sure everyone's alive. And he, like, that kind of play style for a, a team that has multiple carries on it is very good. So it's very hard to clearly punish them. Um, 
in terms of picks and bans. And then when it comes to gameplay, like Adrian is, I, I will say Adrian is the backbone of that team because a lot of a lot of the players play a little greedy, and him being able to back them up is is very crucial to their gameplay. So. Yeah, we saw some of his plays on Janna, that uh, the monsoon over the wall to save Huni was yes. really good. Uh, yes. Oh, what was your pick for the NA? Uh, I really enjoyed the game of Echo Fox versus NRG. Echo Fox has kind of been the underdogs as far as their visa issues are concerned, and I, I'd consider that game definitely an upset. Energy looked really great early this season, and then just kind of fell apart this week. They went 0 2. So I like the, uh, specifically the team composition that Echo Fox picked in their game, it was a triple ADC comp. I don't understand how the heck that worked, but Froggen playing mid lane on Corky did about as much damage as Keith and Hard combined, which is really crazy that your mid laner is doing as much damage as your jungler and your AD carry. Um, but I think the more important thing is they dominated a team that was clearly better than them after letting a gangplank through, who's been really important in the pick ban this entire season. And if you told me two weeks ago that Echo Fox was going to take a game off energy, I would not have believed you. Like, it's just not... Like, if you look at that matchup, you don't expect that. And it was a really big stomp, too. I don't remember the score exactly. I think it was... Like fifteen to three, mm -hmm. um, something which is really impressive lines. from Echo Fox. Do you think that Echo Fox are gonna possibly make a run for playoffs? Um, it's possible. I know that Cop is a really great coach. He did a lot of work for Gravity last season um, after switching off of the AD carry role. So they definitely don't lack in the strategy aspect. And I think now that Froggen's back, you know, the Danish surprise. Um, <laughs> you just can't really. I mean, the Danish mid laners are everywhere. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, they definitely have potential. I know that kind of gets thrown around a lot. Like, every team has potential, but they might actually be able to work with that and make, make a playoffs run. Yeah. Alex, what was your pick for Europe? So, my pick for Europe is a little bit of a weird one, but it is my favorite out of all of them, and it is Fnatic versus Elements. And you might be wondering, well, uh, what do they do? Did they, did they have a really cool team fight? Did they have a really strange uh, team composition? No, they had none of those things. They had ZZ Rod Portal and Banner of Command on their top laner. So not only was this game great because Gamesuit built those two items and was literally just wet bot lane, placed down a Banner of Command Siege minion, and his, siege, his ZZ Rod Portal then was like, okay, guys, let's go do Baron. And But Steve built it too. He, like basically mirrored him so the 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 1v1 where you know you'd have you'd have gamsu trying to push against steve's steve's turn on the bot lane and steve would have to put down his easy rock portal and banner of command and they'd just be going back and forth trying to kill their portal trying to kill their banner of command like it was just weird like I have never seen a game like that in LCS, like, ever. And ZZ Rob Portal has been here for, like, maybe, like, two seasons, and, like, no one has ever built it. And here I am watching as people are saying, like, oh, yeah, ZZ Rob Portal, very good item, yeah. Top dudes, very good item right now. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> so that game was just really fun to watch. The team fights were really good, too. The split pushing was even better. All right, Elle, what was your pick for Europe? Uh, I really enjoyed the Unicorns of Love versus H2K game. You had carries on one side, you had carries on the other side, just a 50 minute slugfest. You really don't see that interesting late game dance in NA compared to regions like Korea where it's kind of the standard. In the end, H2K did kind of pull it out as the win, um, but it's one of those more interesting late games we really don't get a lot of just due to most teams picking really great engage and just winning in the early game, like closer to 30 minutes. Maybe a late game you'd consider 40, but it went I think about 50, and um, another important thing that you should watch in that game is Fiora's dominance, where in NA you see her being 15-1 and win-loss, which is nuts, and then in Europe she's 7-10, and which isn't terrible, but it's not great, so Fiora did end up winning in this game, and you saw a lot of the potential of her both split pushing and chasing and team fighting, kind of giving H2K the edge in that one. It was a it was a very great game to watch if you love late game League of Legends. It was uh, intense Baron dances. I would also say for the Fiora stats, uh, I would go along the lines of saying that they're probably a better group of top laners in NA because there's Darshan, there's Huni, uh, Impact has shown he's been a very solid top laner. And then with Europe, the only couple that I, I think that just stand out is obviously Odawame from H2K, uh, Vizichachi and Cabo. But other than that, all the other ones are kind of not as high of a tier. So mm -hmm. it could have something to do with that. 
All right, yeah. let's move on to the teams of the week. In North America, our highest teams this week still stand with Immortals standing at 10-0, undefeated over halfway through the season as they get into that second half. TSM are now sitting at 7-3. Tied at third are CLG and Cloud9 sitting at 6-4. And, and for Europe, H2K and Gamers2 are sitting at a solid 8-2 and two, with Vitality and Unicorns of Love one game behind them at 7-3. and three. Alex, what was your team for the, this past week? So I talked about this earlier, and like my favorite game from NA, TSM is my pick for this week for the team. Uh, these guys uh, have been great in the past uh, past seasons. They've always put together strong performances and strong teams. And this season, I think they had probably the weakest start that they've had in a long time. And I think that they recovered from it very well, and they're starting to get more and more into the groove of things, working with each other a lot better. And, you know, something I'd like to point out that I thought was pretty interesting is that Doublelift and Hauntzer both had one death over the past, over their two games. So that, I think that shows that their individual play as well as their team play has picked up, even though there were some, there were hiccups in the TIP game. And then there were a couple hiccups with uh, with some other players in the CLG game. I think once the hiccups are cleared, like this team is going to just mop the floor with everyone else in NA. And do you think I, TSM? I will say that with confidence. Do you think TSM's broken the curse of the uh, top laner is not allowed to play? <laughs> I I don't know yet. I will get to you. I will get back to you when I know. For I mean, sure. we'll find out. All right, Owen. Oh, uh, who's your team? I liked Echo Fox. They really had some trouble in the past couple weeks, but they echoed back into definitely not last. Yeah. Okay, not last place. We don't. I don't know where they're going to end up, but not last. Um, Froggen's back. Keith's on point. I'm looking forward to see if they can make playoffs. And we mentioned that earlier. I think it's possible. Um, Cop, again, an amazing coach, has a really strong insight into kind of taking the meta and then doing something weird with it. Not totally unexpected, but at the same time, just giving his team that little bit of an edge that they need to I, I know some people call it like a cheese strategy but he he does it well and um echo fox definitely a force to be reckoned with emerging from those visa issues and roster swap hell where they're just different lineups every week sometimes different lineups by the match it really didn't help them out but now that they've kind of solidified their roster and figured out what they're doing coming off of a 2-0 week i think they definitely have potential to end up in playoffs yeah i think cop uh, when he was playing on Gravity, he would randomly just pull out the Draven Cheese lane, and it would work for him, because mm -hmm. nobody would really expect Draven, which is, I guess, one of the things that, I guess, uh, Freeze would try and do, but we all know how that's been going. Yeah. Great transition into the bottom teams. Yeah. <laughs> In North America, <laughs> Renegade sit 1-9. Echo Fox is actually tied with Dignitas now after their 2-0 week at 3-7, and, and in Europe... Giants finally pick up their first picked up their first win at, against Rawcat. So they are actually sitting in ninth place and Rawcat's now sitting at tenth. And Splice is now at three and seven. So Splice has a little bit of a lead on the other two European teams. So who is your bottom team, Alex? Well, I I don't think it comes as a surprise when I say that Renegades is my bottom team for this week. Uh, it's just I, I, I love these guys, and, you know, I love an underdog story. I love these guys coming up from Challenger and working their way up and then having a very good performance at their uh, the promotional game. And then, you know, they came into the LCS, and I don't know, maybe they all choked. And maybe, you know, maybe some of the players are past their prime. But, like, you know, there's a lot of individual play throughout the entire team that's slowing them down. Not even their carry Freeze. Freeze is a really great player. I don't even think that he can carry them through this. Like, just him by himself. It, it's, you know, it's, it's very, very awkward to watch them. I don't, I don't know about awkward, but almost disappointing. Mm -hmm. Because, like, y you expect them to do so well because they had such a great Challenger Series run. And now we see them losing to Echo Fox, a team that they were able to beat in the past. Uh, they lost to Liquid just got trashed like it's it's almost disappointing because i love this team they're my favorite they're my favorite team it's just hard to watch them lose 
and that's why that's why I'm not like saying oh they're awful you know it's just dis it's disappointing yeah we've been I, I seeing will... a lot of hit or miss teams with the teams either that came from challenger or the new squads that came yeah. from all the buyouts this past year like splice is so far down but gamers 2 and vitality are top four top five yeah and mm -hmm. it's just one of those really interesting things oh and who's your uh most um... disappointing team I was kind of disappointed with Energy's performance because they came into the week, I think it was 5-3, and then just kind of lost. Like, I wasn't really expecting that since they weren't, you know, the best, but they were doing really well. I was underwhelmed by Moon's performance in both of their games. He picked Eve against Echo Fox, and if you watch that game, you just see all of these opportunities that he attempts to take and then get shut down. There's a lot of plays that almost make it and then just don't. He also had a really bad game as Kindred against CLG where he didn't necessarily feed, but he didn't really have the impact you'd kind of expect. And I'm disappointed because we saw great games from him earlier, this split. Um, Energy really needs to pick around his st his strengths. He does am amazing on those like tanky DPS CC junglers. He has really good Rek'Sai games, really good Elise games. And he can even kind of throw out that more aggressive pick. We saw him win with Lee Sin. Um, but if Energy can't draft around his strengths, and they tr put him on these weird, like... I don't know what they were doing with Eve, but like the carry jungler of Kindred, it just didn't really pan out for them. And I did have high hopes for them, hopes for them finishing the season strong, but unless they change something, I'm not saying roster swaps, obviously. I'm saying they need to tap into Moon's natural abilities as that kind of Rek'Sai or Elise and not do weird stuff. Like, I don't understand what they were doing in those drafts. It really didn't work out. Yeah, I think one of the difficulties Moon has been having is, the, is from GBM and... Uh, their top laner, whose name escapes me at the moment. Uh, yeah, so a lot of them end up speaking Korean, even though they aren't necessarily realizing it. And Kon Kwan is kind of the only one that can kind of translate for him. So he uh, and I guess Alltech are having a lot of issues communicating, which could transfer over to some of the weirder picks and possibly some of his poor performance. Yeah. All right. I also think like one of the issues is that just Evelyn as a pick in general, I think that there's too much there's in, especially in top level top level play in the LCS, there's too much deep vision, there's too many pink wards, and there's too much detection. So yeah. being able to you know just find Evelyn wherever she is is you know one of one one of her biggest you know pl things was that before when the blue trinket wasn't this good, you know it it. People didn't pick him, so getting deep vision was just risky, especially when you were going against Evelyn, because she did a lot of damage. Her, she also saw like a bunch of nerfs over in the previous seasons, and those are still the same. And now deep, deep vision is easier to do. So you know, Evelyn, the, all the advantages that Evelyn had before are kind of like thrown out the window when you hit level nine. Yeah, it's very true. All right, Alex, who's your team in the hunt? Okay, my team to watch is Echo Fox, and I never thought I'd be saying this, like uh, Owen said before, but Echo Fox was really good this week with their uh, with their repick up of Froggen, and they could have the possibility of, you know, taking taking a win over their their uh, games against Team Liquid and Team Impulse this week. So I, I'd watch those games. I'd watch Echo Fox really hard because they might be, they might, you know, throw everyone's conceptions about them to the wind. Yeah, and uh, Team Liquid and Team Impulse, not known for their consistencies. Yeah. Alright, Owen, who's your team to watch this upcoming week? I would definitely keep an eye on TSM. They're on a four-game win streak, they have a really great roster, and they definitely have the drive to keep it going. I think TSM is pretty much guaranteed to hold on to that second-place spot in the coming weeks. Maybe not two weeks, but definitely for one week. And I just don't see any flaws in their roster. Like, yeah, they had some trouble earlier, but... I mean, just Bjergsen. Like, you can't really count Yeah, you can't go wrong with him. Presence. Although, the nerfs to Corky might kind of hurt him. I don't know how often he picked that, but it's a really strong mid lane champion that's kind of out of the pool now. Well, I shouldn't be too preemptive. The nerfs to Corky are obviously impactful, and I don't think he really played a lot of Rise mid. That's more of a Korean thing. Yeah. But Rise's nerfs are also going to impact the metagame. And I, there are a lot of changes, but I don't expect any of them to really you know affect mid lane also i know he has a pretty good solo qz and with the nurse to or well with the addition of dusk blade there's a, a weird potential for him to pick that out as kind of like a 
surprise I'm going to kill everyone thing. And their team just looks really solid and they're on a win streak. I mean, obviously it's not as good as Immortals, but yeah. it's something to keep in mind coming into the next weeks. Yeah. All right. We here at EGF love us in fantasy, so let's talk about them. So the biggest winner actually this week was Wild Turtle, the ADC for Immortals, with 60.81 points. That's a little bit over 30 points per game. And the bottom of the table was the Renegades top laner, the substitute Renegades top laner, Flares, who scored four points. Uh, a little bit of <laughs> big difference between the two of them. Alex, who was uh, your favorite? Who was your biggest surprise this past week? Well, um, I don't want to get into specifics about, you know, my personal fantasy team because I lost and someone had Ryu on their team, and I'm kind of upset about that. Well, you also but, first um, picked Remelia in the draft. Okay. <laughs> okay, she scored, 30, she scored over 30 points week one, okay? I, I believe the hype. I don't... Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. So pick? I am a sucker for a good support player. Uh, Adrian this week scored 42.53 points, and I thought that was incredibly impressive. He continues to impress in the Fantasy League. Um, he has some of the highest scoring support play out of anyone else. I think the only people to outscore him is like Yellow Star, and I think there's one more. I can't remember him off the top. I think it was Gate. Gate and then one more person because Gate had like 50 points one week. Well, yeah, Gate's uh, also played in three different positions so far. <laughs> yeah. So he might be getting those points from mid lane or top lane. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, actually, one of the things that I, uh, when I was researching who like scored the highest and lowest, I was looking at like all time for the split so far. I think like four of the top six players are immortals, and Hooney's just like the only one that's not like in the top six. He's, I think he's like 17th or something. Uh, but anyway, oh, and who was your uh, fantasy pick this past week? I was really impressed by Froggen. I mean, everyone pretty much expected him to play well, but with Echo Fox going 2-0, kind of helped him out a lot. He did really well, especially for it being, I think this was his first week back um, after the visa issues. And everyone from UOL did really good. We saw 52.26 points from Visit Chachi. And again, that's kind of something that you'd expect. You know, UOL's going to do good. But it was just, a, a, again, a really high point score. And something else that was interesting is the lowest performer this week, Flares, wasn't a support. Like, we, we always see these supports. A team goes 0-2 and their support has, like, one point. You know, so it's never it's not really interesting to talk about that because, well, I mean, it's a support. But when a top laner does really bad, it's kind of unexpected. I mean, obviously, it's a lane that's very based around your team like if you don't have good jungle presence or if your jungler is losing it's easy to fall behind top and that is a snowballing lane similar to mid but um seeing someone get four points kind of hurts yeah so now that we talked about the top and bottom who should people be playing next week alex i think that people should be playing who he to be completely honest because he mid laners are always a very safe pick for a decent amount of points like I don't see them scoring below ten points each game unless they're doing unless that team is doing absolutely horrid. So, um, who he is a very good pickup because himself also he does very consistently, and he also has a, a an easy match this week. I believe CLG plays Echo Fox, I think, and they also play. Um, oh no, they're playing Renegades and they're playing Team Impulse. So he'll be able to, I, I think he'll have a pretty good one-on-one -on -one against Alex Hitch, and then when it comes to the team fighting, he'll be pretty good. And then against Team Impulse, I think it'll be fairly even. They're both kind of fighting for that, you know, third place spot yeah. along with Cloud9, so mm -hmm. it should be fairly even. I think that, that you should be looking at who he is. Yeah, I think some of the other CLG players would probably be good too. Uh, Darshan, going into the lowest player of last week. So we know him as a very good carry top laner. He could possibly put up a lot of points. And then Afro moves and amazing support along with Stix A. Their synergy is really good. So we could always see something out of them. Oh, and who's your pick? I'd say definitely look at who he. Anyone from CLG is probably going to do pretty well. I mean, Darshan and Stix A are also good picks. Anyone on TSM, specifically Bjergsen, I definitely look at Bjergsen to score pretty high. And obviously Immortals. I mean, if you can get someone from Immortals, just do it. It's Immortals. They're probably going to keep 2 0 people. TSM has the potential, but I don't know when that matchup is. So as long as you don't see any of the other top teams in the in the matchups, I definitely 
um, take players from Immortals, but who he is obviously someone to really look at and be like, okay, it's who he. I mean, it's CLG. They're gonna yeah. do good. All right. So now we got another round of games this upcoming week. What matches are you guys watching for specifically, Alex? So I'm actually gonna watch uh, Echo Fox versus Team Impulse. Um, they are both kind of low in the standings. So Echo Fox is definitely looking a lot stronger with Froggen and being a based on how you know every team does this weekend we could see uh team impulse like fall down like really hard yeah. in the standings and echo fox go way up and that could just flip the entire table on its head and that's going to be really interesting to see if that does happen so yeah i do believe uh game. impulse is four and six so echo fox is probably only a game behind and uh oh and yep. your pick or your match for this upcoming week in general, I'd kind of expect two L's from TSM and Immortals. I don't think that's really the craziest prediction ever. But as far as individual games, I definitely look at Echo Fox versus Liquid. Liquid has had some trouble, similar to Echo Fox, but they've kind of risen up a bit higher. And I think it's going to be an interest game as far, interesting game as far as seeing the you know, solid, but not amazing Liquid versus the resurgence we've seen from Echo Fox kind of bouncing back after their, their visa issues. All right. And as always, the European LCS starts Thursday and Friday at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And the NA matches start Saturday and Sunday, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And that will do us do all of that. <laughs> that does it for tonight. I'd like to thank Alex and Owen for joining me this evening. Thanks for having me. All right. Mm -hmm. And if you guys liked our show, please make sure to follow us on Twitch, find us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. All those links are down below. And from all of us here at EGM, EGF, I'd like to thank you all for watching. You can join us next Monday, 9.30. We'll be back here with another episode of Retake. My name's Jared Warnke, and I hope...